Welcome back to Seek Strength and welcome back to Seekistan. My name is Owen. I am one half of the coaching staff here at Seek Strength. And today we're talking about how you can blow up your front squat if you're currently at a plateau. Front squatting is something that we'll frequently see across a variety of different sports. The obvious first answer is we'll see weightlifters frequently using the front squat. Now, the interesting thing about the front squat for weightlifting, just as a little note, is that the front squat is more useful for the split jerk or the power jerk or the squat jerk than it is for the clean. The back squat is actually more useful for just robustness and general strength levels for the snatch and the clean. But when it comes to the split jerk, the first order of impression that we get is that the front squat produces more results in the jerk portion of the lift than in the clean. Now, it obviously makes sense to have both. And if you're a complete novice lifter, training that front squat patterns is very, very useful. But once you get beyond that beginner stage, and even at the beginner stage, you'll see greater corresponding improvements in your front squat compared to your clean if you improve your front squat. It's quite interesting. It's not to say don't do front squats for your clean, of course, but in terms of magnitude of difference, you'll see a more reliable difference on your jerk than your clean for most parties. Then we'll often see athletes benefiting hugely from front squatting in their training. We actually quite use, frequently use it with rugby players. The postural demands, especially the bigger players, they benefit a lot from the front squats. The resistance to that movement, this slightly off-axis position of the barbell makes it very useful for withstanding and taking hits. And of course, if you can get pretty heavy with that, if you can get a rugby player front squatting 200 kilos, it's a very valuable asset. We also like to see it in grappling or mixed martial arts athletes alongside regular back squatting, of course, but the similar to the rugby players, these postural demands and resistance to that movement with the front squat do provide reliably beneficial results and they often feel it in their sport, which is very, very useful for us as coaches to hear that kind of feedback. We will routinely use it with powerlifters in the off season. So when we're in the kind of training regular phase, competition season, in season for powerlifting, we'll most often use the high bar squat to the low bar squat, very reliable way of producing your low bar squat benefits, which we'll touch on another time. Then we might use things like the bell squat, but in a true off season for powerlifting, we'll regularly use the front squat just as a way of, first of all, just psychological deviation just to give those athletes a break from the squatting mechanics then you also get this reduction on specific positions that might be causing pain so as many of you know if you've taken a powerlifting block or two true to its full completion you'll know that a lot of things hurt it's pretty inevitable and so if we change up these positions we get some relief on these particular positions while still also being able to just do some normal squatting patterns that vaguely resemble the back squat or the low bar squat and so we're still training the legs and then we get the additional benefit of these kind of postural muscles in our back that we may not have been training before or may not be training in this exact same way and then we get the benefits of the front squat for those benefits and we most importantly then hopefully are reducing that pain a little bit so we can return to an in-season a little bit fresher. Then lastly, of course, the bragging rights for a big front squat, if you're not a particular athlete in any domain, is quite useful. Being able to front squat 180 kilos is a gargantuan lift. If we take away weightlifters, and even then, if we're looking at a lot of amateur intermediate weightlifters, most people can't front squat 180 kilos. That's a massive front squat. So whether you weigh 80 kilos or 180 kilos, Front squatting 180 kilos plus is a huge front squat. It takes a lot of work. It's not something you can fake, for example. It is something that takes a lot of diligence and work to get to at least 180 kilo front squat. So whoever you are, if at any stage you front squat at 180 kilos, let me tell you just from experience from seeing a lot of different lifters, that is a massive front squat. You should be quite proud of that lift. Lastly, for myself, I have front squatted 240 kilos just for the record. I front squatted that a couple of years ago. And once I hit that 240 kilo front squat, I didn't push it any further beyond that. That was more than enough for my weightlifting goals. It's something that I suspect I could push closer to 260. Last year when I high bar squatted 300 kilos, there probably was an opportunity to front squat more than 240 if I'd been practicing it. However, I didn't take advantage of that window, but I may again in the future. So the first place to start with blowing up your front squat is somewhat of an oxymoron or, or might sound kind of paradoxical, but the back squat or back squatting patterns are much more useful for bringing up your front squat. Now, this is something I've seen ad nauseum. I've seen this so many times, both personally, but with a variety of different athletes and lifters, is that while you're practicing the front squat, bringing up your heavier back squat numbers is a really reliable way of increasing your capacity to front squat a heavier weight. So, of course, continue to practice your front squat while you're trying to improve it, but a reliable mechanism where you're increasing your back squat allows us to 
quite literally just use heavier weights. So for example, if you're trying to front squat 180 kilos, very laudable goal as we just talked about, if you're able to front squat 160 for one to two reps currently, but you can back squat 180 kilos for five, and if you improve that 180 for five to 180 for 10 reps or more, you've really given yourself a great opportunity to front squat 180 kilos. While there is other demands on the front squat that we'll touch on in just a minute, just pure leg strength ability to extend your legs through that full range of motion is a really important part of that and we can't get away from that and so it's much easier to increase your capacity the back squat compared to your front squat hence the point of this video so if we increase our back squat even marginally by 10 20 percent whether that's repetitions at a given weight or if that's our 1rm we're really giving yourself a great opportunity to go over a large section of that front squat. Now, some of you might ask, and it's been asked recently, could you safety bar squat? And you could, for sure. Just know that you're being a big softy, and for your whole career, everyone will be like, oh, he was afraid of back squats. Now, I'm, I'm mostly joking about that, but the safety bar squat would be a reliable option. Less so the low bar squat, although it still helped to an extent, we're slightly different if we're low bar squatting to below parallel if we're box squatting to parallel or below or slightly above we're still getting some benefit for sure you know if you're trying to front squat 180 kilos and you can low bar 300 kilos you probably have a pretty good chance of front squatting that 180 kilos or you're box squatting 300 kilos there is a reasonable room for improvement there in your front squat however that's not really efficient it's not really realistic to expect you to have 150 120 kilo plus on your back squat variation whereas a regular high bar squat will reliably and give you a safer route for improving that front squat so the first place is just look at overall leg strength and pushing that into the realm if you want an exact number generally if you can hit something for eight to ten reps you've probably have a great chance at front squatting now there's always exceptions to approve these rules but in general when we make these videos we're making it for the broad spectrum of people that we see routinely so if you can back squat a weight for somewhere between eight to ten reps you have a good chance if you're a somewhat decent front squatter and you've been practicing your front squat you have a good chance of then front squatting that for a single or maybe even a little bit more so just overall leg strength cannot be forgotten about and it's definitely one of the areas where I've seen it myself where I've taken breaks from front squats and then I've just pushed that back squat a little bit further to certain numbers and within three to four weeks it transfers over really well and I've seen this with a lot of other athletes. I've also done periods where I've only front squatted and I front squatted quite diligently and quite frequently and while it's made me really good at reproducing certain front squat weights it made the skill of front squatting much better it didn't make that 1RM go any further I was able to for example front squat 210 basically any day but getting beyond 220 and getting back to that 240 was very very far away whereas if my just overall back squat strength was much higher at the time then I would have had much better chances I've seen multiple times myself and other athletes. The second place we want to be looking at is mobility. Mobility is something that if we're using a clean grip or a normal grip front squat is something that is under a lot of pressure and it is something compared to the back squat, the low bar squat, safety bar squat is a really important part of the front squat. The front squat is quite interesting because it is quite a high skill movement and one of these skills is be able to get into good position. Now many of you may know you sit up for a front squat, you're in a rounded upper back, you look like a turtle, the barbell is hurting your wrist, it's hurting your shoulders, it's pressing onto your neck, it might not even be touching your shoulders until it gets heavier. You know that the front squat demands a lot in your mobility so unless we're talking specifically about the cross grip front squat if we're talking about a fingertip front squat or what we'll call a weightlifter's front squat your mobility is put under a lot of pressure we looking at all the way from your ankle range of motion hip range of motion thoracic lats even your external rotation of your forearm so adduction of your forearm the ability to just to rotate those thumbs towards your midline and opening up here all of this is under huge pressure which is one of the benefits of the front squat because you actually get a little bit of mobility work from the front squat but these particular positions are all challenged hugely and unless you have very good amounts of mobility and range of motion essentially in the whole body largely the only piece we're missing here is the overhead position so if you are lacking anywhere here if you're lacking that ankle mobility you're going to be screwed if you're lacking that hip mobility or thoracic you're going to have a very very hard time if it's uncomfortable on your forearm and your wrists you are going to have a really hard time now we've quite a few mobility videos on the channel which you'll be able to search for quite recently we've hip mobility ankle mobility and front rack mobility so i won't rehash them here you will be able to find those on the channel but remember the mobility for the front squat is something that no matter how much leg strength you have you know we frequently see let's say a really strong part of their giving the front squat a go and they'll be vastly below what they should be able to do given their strength levels you know we'll see powerlifters come into front squatting or come into weightlifting and they'll have done huge numbers before very legit 
very strong deep squats, but their ability to front squat is challenged purely because their mobility of that movement is extremely lacking. So working on mobility for front squatting is something that cannot be forgotten about. You have to work in a daily and it will dissipate if you don't have very good mobility already. It's something you'll have to work really diligently on and unfortunately is quite uncomfortable and requires a lot of whole body mobility work done. So it cannot go without being said that the mobility is hugely important. The third place is postural demand, so the upper body. So obviously we've covered the lower body, we've covered mobility, we've covered lower body strength just from purely lifting heavier movements like the back squat, for example. But when it comes to the postural demands, training the specific upper body can be hugely beneficial. So if you have that mobility and if you have the leg strength, what we'll often see the giving point or the failing point for a lot of lifters is a dropping of the chest and a rounding or flexing of the upper back. Now we can really usefully train this. One of those ways, of course, is simply by practicing the front squat, practicing those isometric positions or practicing holding those positions in a good position. Now, of course, the front squat allows us to do that, but we don't want to solely rely on the front squat to actually get those benefits. There's a lot of other ways we can do that that are pretty low impact and that will also benefit you in other areas. So the first place to start is upper back training. It obviously can't be forgotten about it's essentially a no-brainer. What style of upper back training? Well, this depends on what you particularly favor. We're largely going to be looking at rowing movements here. So generally in the horizontal plane is something that benefits the front squat a lot. Barbell rows, strict barbell rows are incredibly useful, really forcing that isometric position, moving super slow through the eccentric and holding those positions really well with somewhat lighter weights are really beneficial. But then on the other spectrum, if we are quite a strong lifter, getting a little bit more body English into those barbell rows can be really useful getting up to a, you know, a little bit of body English here. We're not talking about absolutely going batshit crazy and essentially doing clean pulls. We want still some maintenance of that upper back position and hinging with the floor but a spectrum of pulls is very useful horizontal pulls on a machine are fantastic it's just not always available especially if you're in a weightlifting gym or a crossfit style gym you probably don't have access to a cable machine but if you do i love cable rows they're such a good assistance exercise you can get such a focus on the particular muscle group that you're looking for you can push them really close to failure without any major issues and they reliably produce good benefits for that front squat so Horizontal cable rowing, if you have access to that, is fantastic. Then we have the smaller muscles or smaller muscle groups, rear delts, for example, even the traps around the neck are very useful to be trained and they're not to be forgotten about. So we're looking at things like rear delt flies, both strict and a little bit of body English. I like to get a little bit heavier with those on some lifts. So we're at a 45 degree angle with the floor. We're holding some bigger bumper plates generally or maybe some dumbbells and we're getting a little bit of body English in there and pushing that closer to a little bit of muscular failure. Not true muscular failure where we're really swinging it, but I do like to see in those lifters that the stricter, lighter prone variations are very useful, of course. But again, like the rowing, getting a little bit heavier with those, a little bit of body English can be reliably very useful because we do need some heavier weights. So those, what I would call body English standing 45 degree rear delt flies also produce excellent results. Of course, then core training is something that can't be forgotten about. A lot of times the inability to maintain the posture from the front can affect your back in those positions and training the core under any fashion is probably something you're not doing enough. I certainly am doing enough and have made some diligent approaches in the last few weeks to make a bit more effort just to train the core a little bit more routinely. The great thing about core training is that for most of us, any amount of core training with any movement is very beneficial. So obliques, flexion, isometric holds, anything like that generally can be very beneficial. We're looking at side bends, leg raises, toes to bar, knees to chest, GHD sit-ups, weighted sit-ups, crunches, Anything that'll actually specifically put a bit of volume to your core that's directly looking at those can be very useful. Payoff presses are fantastic as well for the front squat. And just doing these two to three times a week for approximately 10 to 15 minutes will give you a lot of the benefits. It's something that it is kind of boring, but it is low hanging fruit for a lot of us. It's certainly an area that we can improve a little bit. And even if you're not directly adding a huge amount of muscle, the actual skill of bracing is something that's going to be improved here and training those core muscles, increasing a little bit of that mind-muscle connection with those specific areas can be highly useful for high-skilled and demanding movements like the front squat. The next place you need to look at then is the front squat in terms of a skill. So when we're looking at back squatting, when we're looking at low bar squatting, 
these are relatively low skill movements. Now, practicing and maintaining some of those skills is really difficult because the load is a very high demanding variable that we include there. So maintaining a certain position might be easy with lighter weights, for example, on the high bar squat or the low bar squat, and similar to front squat, is that when we're trying to maintain these positions, we can do them at certain loads, but if we get heavier, while the cue might be simple, the action under load is very, very difficult. So think of the front squat also as a bit more of a skill demanding lift than other squatting variations. You know, if we're taking the safety bar squat or we're taking the high bar squat, they are high skill movements, of course, but the actual skill and coordination of the front squat is just that little bit more compared to the back squat. So you may need to spend a bit more time doing singles than you're accustomed to compared to the other lifts. So a little bit more singles further out. So we're talking maybe 20% further out than we would normally reintroduce singles into a program. You don't need to be front squatting singles all year round or all training block around. But there is times where you might need to introduce singles a little bit further out because the practice of those singles can be quite demanding. And especially if you're near your limits of your capacity for front squatting right now, you do need to push that a little bit further and really get comfortable with them because the skill of the front squat is so much more unforgiving compared to the back squat or the low bar squat. You know, if we get out of position on those squatting variations, we can kind of bullshit our way through but unfortunately or fortunately depending on the demands of what you're looking at from the front squat unfortunately the front squat is more unforgiving if we lose position and so practicing those heavier singles can be really beneficial because the skill of the front squat isn't something you should lose connection with or it's something you should try and get back into connection with a little bit further out than you would normally max because those specific weights have a little bit more of a skill demand component to them that's not just necessarily brute strength so if we're getting that skill component with these other aspects, you're giving yourself a good chance. So practicing singles a little bit further out, not for the whole training block, just a little bit further out can be hugely beneficial. And it's not something to be forgotten about. And sometimes the people are front squatting, they forget that the skill of the single and the front squat is hugely beneficial. The last base to consider with front squatting is that while we did talk about there just in regards to doing more singles, the front squat is very fatiguing. So it's something you need to be super conscious of in regards to other training. We find quite frequently that when you're front squatting, the fatigue on a heavy maximum balls out front squat is very similar to a heavy deadlift. The neural fatigue people get, this kind of malaise that comes over people, sometimes can last up to seven, 10 days, maybe even a little bit longer. I know personally, if I do a balls out single on the front squat, we're talking nearly a week before I'm fully recovered. Compared to a heavy single on the back squat, some days the next day I'm fine. Literally yesterday, I back squatted 270 kilos after breaking my foot seven weeks ago. And today, very little fatigue, if anything, if in noticeable. I've already trained this morning. Whereas if I was to do a heavy front squat, even when in a good front squat shape, you'll find that the fatigue lasts very, very long on front squats. The tail of that fatigue is something that is somewhat deceptive. So I'd highly encourage you just to be really conscious of this in your program. So if you're trying to push that front squat and you're an athlete, you know, you're a rugby player, you're a grappler, whatever you're using the front squat for, make sure that you're doing this front squat in the off season and you're not trying to push it in the in season because the fatigue it will have on your sport. If your back is fatigued and you're taking a hit on rugby, you're going to get mangled because your ability to maintain those positions is going to be highly compromised, similar with grappling, jiu-jitsu, judo. While it's fantastic for those sports to have a big front squat, Having a big front squat just fatigued you a couple of days before and trying to practice your sport is going to be an absolute death trap for you in maintaining high skills and fine motor patterns in your sport. And then if they're, someone's trying to take you down, it's going to be a lot easier for them if you're fatigued from the front squat. Similar with powerlifters, you know, if you're pushing your front squat in the in-season, you're going to be really compromising your deadlifting, you're going to be compromising your high bar squatting, you're going to be compromising your assistance work, your deadlifting, your squatting, all of that is going to be massively compromised. So... Being super conscious of where that fatigue is going to go from the front squat is really important. I don't find the the repetitions as compromising as much for lifters. So, you know, if we're doing our 4 by 3 or 5 by 3 it's tough, but not as intense. If we're doing lighter singles, you know, if we're doing maybe 80% or so, the singles on the front squat aren't a massive issue. But once we start getting into that 95, 90% plus ranges on the front squat and we start grinding them out, even if we're maintaining really good positions, you're still going to see a lot of fatigue. And it's something you see quite commonly. So planning when your max outs are there, planning when you're going to push that front squat is really important in regards to your rest of your training. We obviously, a lot of us know deadlifting is super fatiguing and we know that the deadlift needs to be placed at the right time. But the front squat is often forgotten about in just how important that is. So if you're a weightlifter, 
you need to be really smart. You can't be maxing your front squad a week out from competition. You need to be having a strong front squad coming up to the competition, but not your strongest front squad. I hope this video is beneficial. If there's any particular lift you would like to see us do a style of video like this on, please do let us know, and we will, of course, make it. We're always open to things that are ailing you and helping you with your training. There will be a front squat program coming to the Seek Strength app because it's something that has been requested for quite a long time. People routinely run the routine your squat programs for the front squat and we see an average of about 15 kilos on people's front squats which is fantastic but that is a grueling program to be running for the front squat doing tens and eights on the front squat is quite tough so there will be a front squat specific program coming to the app in the near future